Now, let's discuss the fifth important property, which is box of x plus y is equal to and is also equal to the first case being if fractional part of x plus fractional part of y is less than 1 this is this fractional part of x plus fractional part of y is greater than or equal to 1. So, we need to prove this. Again, you can always verify this using any value of x and y, assuming that x and y are real numbers. But let's prove this. To prove this, let's say x is equal to ix plus fx, where ix is the box function part, fx is the fractional part. And let's assume that y equals to iy plus fy. Okay. Now, you know that the fractional part lies between this. Similarly, the fractional part of y will lie between 0 to 1. Okay. So, the sum of the fractional part of x and y lies between 0 to 2. So, if this is true, then the box of this fx plus fy can be 0 or can be 1 depending on which interval it lies. If fx plus fy lies between 0 and 1, the box of that is 0. If fx plus fy lies between 1 and 2, the box of that is 1. Okay. Now, so, I have to find what this is. So, let's say this is x plus y. This is equal to ix plus iy plus fx plus fy box. Now, I can take this out. We had seen that in the second or third property, we had seen that box of n plus x equals to n plus box of x if, if n is an integer. So, since ix plus iy is an integer, I can take that out and I am remain with this. Okay. Now, if fx plus fy is less than 1, then this becomes ix plus iy because box of that is 0 if fx plus fy is less than 1 0 is equal to ix plus iy plus 1 if it's greater than right so now you replace this ix you can replace by box of x iy you replace by box of y similarly here also and if you replace all this, you'll see that this is the same expression like this. So, we have proved the fifth important property of greatest integer function. Now, we move on to the sixth and the last important property of greatest integer function. The last property which is of concern is Okay. Now, n should be a natural number and x should be a real number. Now, let's, let's prove this. Again, let's say that i is equal to ix plus ifx. Now, now since n is a natural number, when I divide x by n, I'll get a quotient lambda and a remainder r so that I can write x equals to plus r. You know, when you divide a number by another number, you get a quotient and a remainder and you can write this as this, where n is the divisor, the lambda is the quotient and r is the remainder, right? So, so I can write x as ix plus fx, which is equal to a now is also equal to n lambda plus r plus fx. Now, this is not ix, this is an 
this is i x you think you know because uh, x can be any real number but when i have a integer an integer can be represented in terms of other integers like this so i x is not a uh, i x is integer when i divide this by n i can write i x as n lambda plus r so x i can represent like this now if i represent x like this x by n becomes what x by n becomes lambda and gets cancelled this r plus fx by n okay now since r is a remainder you know that r lies between 0 to n minus 1 and you also know that fx lies between 0 to 1 right now so r plus fx will lie between what r plus fx lies between okay this equality sign won't be there because r has to be less than n minus 1 if r is equal to an n i think this should be there r is less than or equal to n minus 1 it's not equal to n so this is the case okay now if i divide by n so i'll get this number lies between 0 and 1 so box of this is box of this part is 0 so box of x plus n is just lambda okay now so you see that box of this part this is equal to lambda now let's say i take box of x box of x is what let's say i take box of x box of x is ix which can be represented as n lambda plus r okay so if i divide box of x by n i'll get lambda plus r by n now if i take again a box of this if i take a box of this i can write lambda plus r by n i can take out lambda because lambda is an integer in this case now you see that r lies between 0 to n minus 1 so this is obviously less than this is less than 1 this becomes lambda so from here you get this equal to lambda from this again you get this equal to lambda so this property is again verified okay now so we have covered what basic things we need to know about the greatest integer function and we have also seen what are the properties of the greatest integer function now let's conclude this section that is the greatest integer function by solving one problem